Hey guys, welcome to CG Tooth Plus. My name is Harrison. Uh, today we're going to do uh, advanced compositing from Cinema 4D into After Effects. I started this uh, part one on the site. It's already out there. It's how to export 3D camera from Cinema 4D into After Effects. I would highly suggest if you haven't already, watch that first before you watch this one because I'm going to be going through things very quickly and you're probably going to be a little lost. Um, I've been reading some of the comments and the questions on the people have left. Uh, seems like a lot of people were clamoring to have camera data go from After Effects to Cinema 4D. I'm not a fan of that. I come from a 3D background and I like the 3D camera a lot better. I don't like camera in After Effects. Uh, it just seems like it's clunky and cumbersome and I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of it. Um, there's a software uh, set called CS Tools that you can then import into Cinema 4D. It's free and it's got four camera modes in it. There's a docu-cam, an action cam, a, uh, and two just plain camera modes in there. Uh, they have a lot of uh, mocha expressions on them that are much like Wiggler and things like that in After Effects. And it's all slider controlled and it's all keyframeable and I, I think it's a really, really nice uh, option for everybody. So what I'll probably do is I'll probably do a series of tutorials on those including all the you know, lighting, and there, there's some in there that replicate 3D stroke and stuff like that. I'll, I'll set a whole block of tutorials aside to explain how to use CS tools and how to work them in a workflow, and then obviously how to work them between Cinema 4D and After Effects. Um, seems like that's basically it. Uh, the other thing I have to remind everybody is I come from a motion graphics background, so a lot of the stuff you're going to see when it comes to this is going to be more MoGraph and less well, what I like to call a real 3D, which is pixel pushing and you know character modeling and rigging and, and doing stuff that real 3D designers do. Uh, so hopefully uh, that this will help you guys along, answer a lot of questions, and uh, hope you learn something. Seriously, um, today we're going to do Cinema 4D. In Cinema 4D, we're going to do a sky texture. Uh, then we're going to use a compositing tag to make sure the camera doesn't uh, see it. Then we're going to make a matte object to use, and uh, also I'm going to show you how to do depth of field, set it up in Cinema 4D so you can then use it and s manipulate it in After Effects, which I feel is a lot better than Cinema 4D's stock ability to do depth of field. Um, in After Effects, we're gonna, I'm going to show you how to use expressions, just a real easy and simple expression to make a 3D flare. Basically, it's a technique to make any 2D effect that you want to have manipulated in 3D. Uh, using position coordinates. Uh, you'll see. And uh, finally, just general compositing and things like that. Um, yeah, so let's get started. Uh, just to let you guys know, I have a note in front of my monitor that says, go slow. So hopefully that helps because I read some of the comments and I could tell that some people, like, English is not your first language. And yeah. So I'm going to try and go slow here. Uh, if I tend to speed up, I apologize, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll try and make a better effort to have this understandable. Anyway, uh, we're going to get started with our familiar character here. We're just going to type in with the text, just a spline uh, text. I don't like using the menus just because they're clunky and cumbersome. And I, I just like, you know, here are the quick, uh, quick buttons right here. You can add anything you want to these. Um, you just, you know, highlight this, go down, text, there it is. Uh, in the text thing, uh, the text spline, we're going to type in CG Toots Plus. Uh, because if anybody decides to steal this and post it on YouTube, at least they know where they got it originally. Uh, 30, yeah, 30 depth. Give it like a little bit of chunkiness to it. And then under caps, we're going to change it to uh, fillet cap. Bump the steps up to four, bring the radius down to three. Uh, we're going to make it nice rounded corners and edges right there. Uh, let's save it real quick. Desktop. Uh, I like to uh, C4D to AE22. I like to divide my 3D and my After Effects and Photoshop and Illustrator files into different folders so that way I don't mess things up. Uh, we're going to title this um, CG Toots Plus Logo. There we go. All right, then we have that going. All right, so uh, we're going to grab, we're gonna th just going to throw a texture on this real quick. Uh, if you go down here to our, your materials, um, under shader, there's a ton of, actually, there's even, even material presets. If you've never messed with these, I would highly suggest it. There are a ton of little, of little just a billion different um, materials that Cinema 4D comes with stock that you can mess around with. I mean, there's some really great stuff in here. 
Um, like in the materials, I mean, if you want to mess with fabrics, here's some really cool fabrics. Uh, let's see, just basic. They have stone, tile, metals. They're not going to be, you know, robust, and they might not work, but at least they'll get you started. Like if you want to turn, the, if you want to make this wood, you can just pick wood 01, drop it on here, and at least it'll give you a starting point that you can then go into and. You know, you can mess around because you can, well, I don't think you're going to be able to see the wood grain, but you can see the wood grain right here, and it'll give you a chance to, because uh, then you can open up this JPEG and mess around with it. But if you want to do um, a procedural one, uh, they have shaders right here, where they have um, bonji, which is a, a glass, uh, bonsai, which is, a, that's a wood type of texture, uh, chi, danel. Now, the thing you have to remember about, sorry, it's 9.30 in the morning, I woke up a little bit ago. Um, thing you have to remember when it comes to stuff like this is uh, we're gonna go down here to Denel, and I got mail. This is just like you suck at Photoshop, where people interrupt me while I'm doing this. Sorry, it's just my sister. All right, so um, we have the Denel shader here. Uh, if you open it, if you open up a regular texture, just a regular mat material, you see we have color, diffusion, luminance. We have a ton of different options here. You don't have to know all of them. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna make a tutorial where I go over some of these, and we do some really advanced stuff like textures and layers and stuff like that within a, a given um, attribute. So you can see we have all these things right here. But if you go into a Danel shader, it's different. You have a diffuse layer, uh, which is your color. Then you have three different levels of specular. Then you have a reflection, environment, ambient value, roughness, uh, anisotropy. And anisotropy, anisotropy. I can never remember. Ugh, I can never pronounce that correctly. Anyway, uh, this is a real quick, and you can see it looks kind of good. Real quick shader. Uh, if you go to reflection, we're gonna bump up the reflection to let's put it at 50. Um, and you can see we have an edge intensity. If we turn that down, we could take the reflection off the edges, or we can intensify them even more. I think we can even take it over 100% if you really want to blast it to. Hi Evan. All right, we're just gonna change it to 75, so we have a nice little texture right there. Plus, uh, the other thing you can do is you can give the the reflection edges color. Uh, this is more of a grayscale thing, so you can mess with them like that. Uh, I mean, you, I mean, you can give them like really complex color and get some really cool effects with it. Like we can make the reflections yellow as opposed to red, and see what that looks like. But we'll just leave it white for right now. Um, you have a distance fall off in the reflection if the object gets further and further away from whatever you're texturing you can um, have the reflection disappear really good for if you wanted to use like a diffuse surface for a reflection or something like that uh, if you notice that if you have like a if you have a if you have a surface that is somewhat reflective but it's still kind of rough the further the object gets away the less you'll see the reflection so you would use distance fall off for that um, I think I'm speeding up here. Anyway, so cut out of that. We're going to apply our Danel shader to our CG Toots Plus logo here. Get rid of that sucker. And uh, as you can see already, it looks okay. I mean, you know, we got kind of a glassy look here. We got cool reflections popping up inside it. Uh, it's kind of jaggedy. We're going to change that. Uh, we're going to bump up the, uh, the, um, uh, anti-aliasing on it. Uh, in our render settings, go down here to anti-aliasing. Change the anti-aliasing to best, and then change the filter to. Well, let's just change the animation. Just leave it like that. Give it a little bit of a soft edge. That's better. And you can see we already have some cool reflections going on here, and it looks okay. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna give it some more depth, though. Uh, I'll that. We're gonna make a sky texture now. Um, since I do a background in motion graphics, uh, I like to have environments set up that give my objects depth. But sometimes, you know, I'll have a logo that I have to light and make look pretty. And then I have to make that look pretty in all the different things that my client wants. Like if I'm doing a commercial and I have, let's say, eight commercials, and there's a tag animation with the logo. And the tag animation, each commercial has to have a different tag animation for each one. So either the logo comes on differently or it has a different animated piece to it or the background's different or something. The logo has to look identical throughout the entire thing. So what I have to do is I have to basically build this procedurally. Like you see, I didn't make this editable. It, the text is still there. It's non-destructive. And the other thing I like to do is I like to make a sky texture and use that to give this depth. So we're going to go here, go into sky. A sky texture is exactly what it sounds like. It's a sky. And as you can see, it's already kind of illuminating the object. 
all this is is just the sky reflected inside the CG Toots Plus logo. Looks kind of washed out because our sky is just this basic bland off white. So what we want to do is we want to get that texture. So down here in this material, I have my sky texture, which all it is is a gradient in Cinema 4D that I went in and changed the values like black and white and to make harsh lines you take black and another color and you move them right next to each other uh, different values like this and then down here in the turbulence value I turned it to 36 right here so if you go zero you can see it's just flat straight lines but if I make it if I bump up the turbulence like 36 or so um, or if I like here I'll show you it starts off gradually I can do 10 just a little wavy or I can do like 90 and have this melted paint looking thing like oil and water uh, so I'm gonna put this back to about 35 oh, 35 you can see I got kind of some kind of some wavy effects to it and it's kind of abstract and it looks okay so I want to apply this to my sky texture so I click drag it on my sky texture and you can see it's showing up in the sky texture I have these lines going through it which look pretty great and then if you look in the letters I have reflections showing up on the inside and if I line this up I might even be able to get one on the front this is how I normally do it but yeah see I got a, like a little uh, reflection going across the front there you know a little uh, reflection going across the front there I wonder how they accomplish that that by the way is not how you do that there I'll, I'll in another tutorial I'll show you how to do that. well I can actually show you in this tutorial if I have time I'll show you how to do uh, something like that alright so now we have our uh, little reflection going on. We got some depth going on. We got some reflections inside here. We got, if we animate the camera across, we can get this reflection going across and it'll look really, really cool. But the problem is, the sky texture is showing up in the background and I don't want that. I just want it to affect the letters and not show up. So now we're going to start messing with um, the other thing I was talking about, which is compositing tags. If you right click on sky, go into Cinema 4D tags, down here into compositing, that noise if you can hear it, is my dog chewing on a bone, so don't get weirded out. Uh, Cinema 4D tags, uh, go to compositing. Now we have like um, this little director clappy thing, I don't know what it's called. Uh, and then down here we have a bunch of options. We have our, our you know, just the basic tags, uh, you know, what we're going to call it, compositing tag, if we want to stick it in a layer uh, for organization purposes. Then we have tag, GI, exclusion, and object buffer. The two you're going to mess with 80% of the time are going to be tag and exclusion. Um, exclusion works exactly the same way as it does on a light. Like if I bring in a light and I don't want it to light uh, the CG2 logo, I want it to light something else. Um, you go into light, you go down to scene, which is drag, and then it's excluded, and now the light does not affect our CG2s here. Uh, but down here under tag, we have a whole bunch of options. What I'm going to show you are these, and then later on we're going to make a matte object. Excuse me. So, uh, what this basically says is these check marks mean this object that you've composited, that you've added this tag to, does this. So, it does cast shadows, it does receive shadows. It's seen by rays, seen by refraction, seen by reflection, etc., etc. The one we want to toggle is seen by camera. We want to turn that off. When we turn it off, it's no longer seen by the camera, but it's still being seen by our object. See? All washed out, ugly right now. Um, the sky is still affecting the object, but it is no longer being able to be seen by the camera. This is incredibly important when you want to do something like a multi pass render, or you want to do render different bits and pieces like we're going to do later where we want to have uh, the reflections and everything playing across but we want to dice this project up and set out different renders with alpha channels so we can composite it later so that's what that tag does in fact let's rename this text so now what we're going to do is we're just going to real quick we're going to light our CG2's logo here uh, let me grab we're just going to do another if you watched my last tutorial it was a real quick simple three point light array Bring this up here. Bring the light way, way down. And then over. Bring this down too. And then we're going to put a spotlight right at the center of this sucker. Widen it. Tuck it in. And then soften the color. Alright, now we're going to bring in our camera. Target camera. Ugh, sorry, my nose gets stuffed up in the morning, so if I sound congested, that's why. Oh. 
the temperature changed really bad last night uh, up here in Cleveland, so you know, it rained and not that you care. Uh, you just want me to show you how to do this. Anyway, uh, sorry. So we have our camera with the target, uh, four point view panel. That's what I use all the time, bottom split, just because it's just how I use it. Uh, it's personal preference if you never mess with these. I highly suggest it. It's nice having all these different panels. You can light stuff up, or you can line stuff up in here. Uh, bottom right, change the camera to perspective, and then we're going to put the scene camera in. And then here's our scene camera. And once again, just like in You Suck at Photoshop, people are bugging me again. Hang on a second, let me just uh, be right back. I'm going to put up my be right back away message. There we go. All right, so you can see here's our logo, kind of washed out and everything, but we're going to Turn down the light a bit. Uh, we're going to change. Let's bring the reflection down slightly. Let's change it to 45. And then we'll decrease the illumination and we'll decrease the intensity on the outer specular just a bit. See how this looks? Eh, that looks alright. I mean, it's not spectacular, but I mean, we've got a reflection going across it. It looks okay so far. So that's what we're going to play with today. Actually, you know what? Let me make, let's make this a deeper red. Instead of this hot chroma red going on here. Yeah, it's desaturated. That'll be fine. We'll just leave that like that. Um, we had, did they put that option in there? No, they didn't. They didn't put an additive object in there. Okay, so now we have our CG suits with the depth from the environment, the sky texture that we can't see, and our lights. Uh, let's start adding some just background environment thing, uh, nothing too crazy. Just a cylinder, just increase the height to like a thousand. That's all. Uh, then we're just going to move this back, 600. Copy and paste, 600. Copy and paste, 600. Copy and paste, 600. All right. Now we're going to offset this slightly. Put that over there, put this over here, this over here. And I know like, some of you in the back of the class are going, why don't you use MoGraph for that? That'd be super easy. And yeah, yeah, it would. It would be super easy. Only uh, in case you don't know MoGraph, I don't want you to leave you in the dark with this. I'd rather you uh, learn the technique, and then I'll show, I'll do a tutorial later on but with MoGraph where I'll mess with it and do all kinds of crazy stuff with it. Um, sorry, people are still bothering me. All right, so then we're going to make a null object, take our cylinders, throw it into the null object. We're going to type this background. And we don't need a texture for these, so let's tuck these right in. As you can see, we got cylinders in the background with CG2 plus on the front. Ugh. Excuse me. Uh, we're going to turn down our reflection just a little bit more. Turn it down to 20, because we want this to be a red with eh, it's a little bit too dark. Maybe 30? Let's see how that looks. Let's up the diffused color, bring it up to about there. Yeah, that'll work. Open our light a little bit more. Uh, we're going to turn the specular off on the light, see how that looks, because we might be getting all the different colors in the specular that I don't want. Yeah, that works fine. All right, now we're going to make another texture. Uh, all we're going to do is just make just a plain texture, just double click down here. Under material, we're going to call this background texture, and then we're just going to bring this down to like 40%, just a charcoal gray, you know, and then we're going to apply this to our background. There. Now we have less bleeding going on here with the, um, oh, excuse me, with the uh, uh, CG Tooth logo and the cylinder. All right, so now we have that set up. Uh, next up, I want to show you how to do uh, depth of field. Oh, I'm sorry. We're going to set up our uh, med object. So we're going to structure this like we're doing a project. Let's say uh, the client wanted us to show the logo, come down to where we're facing the logo, and then animate off to video. Uh, it's a, actually a very popular thing to do, like a, like a tag open or something, uh, where we show the logo, or like a bumper, where we come in from commercial to show the logo, and then it animates out to show whatever video they want to show, like if it's for a TV show or news or a station of some kind. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to make a real simple uh, 